Okay, I'm going to do a little, uh, like, uh, geophysical and meteorological and heliospherical <laughs> um, mashup here. Uh, everyone knows that, uh, keeps up with this, knows that the, in Oaxaca, Oaxaca um, they had the 7.4 yesterday, a little after, uh, well, that would have been uh, uh, two, uh, 1 p.m. Central Daylight Savings Time. Uh, that's a nice size earthquake. That's nothing to sneeze at. It, it did have a depth of uh, 12 miles. That's not a depth to sneeze at. So there was some damage, of course, down there. Now, maybe I wanted to show you this just to show you, okay, it happened on this day. This was the magnitude, and uh, this was the depth. And again, remember, I'm kind of doing this video. I'm going to upload it, but it's really more for to go into my study files. And, of course, my study files wouldn't be complete if I didn't include some HARP data here. So here is the HARP magnetometer uh, in Kokona, Alaska, it's at the HARP facility, the research facility. But this is the magnetometer from there. And this is showing the uh, the BX component, which is, I stick with the BX component. I know that there's two other components to look at, but I, I, I learned that it, I can forecast better if I stay with one component and look at it for a long time and learn how it reacts. This shows uh, some decent banding in that area that always tends to worry me that two and a half hertz because uh, two and a half hertz seem to be coinciding with the um, earthquake in Japan last year on the 11th and I'll show you more about that in a minute but anyway today we had our Oaxaca Oaxaca it's called Oaxaca uh, Mexico earthquake and uh, Look, we have pretty close to two and a half on the uh, Kona magnetometer. Which one causes which? Well, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, it's inter interesting to see, though. Now, here's the earthquake details from uh, March the 11th of 2011. The uh, big, uh, very strong earthquake that... Uh, really hurt really hurt the uh, Japanese nation um, this was uh, on uh, uh, Friday March the 11th uh, it had a depth excuse me it had a depth of 18 miles here's all its parameters again I'm just getting this in just for research material so here's the parameters of it now let's take a look at the induction magnetometer uh, from HARP for days leading up to this. Okay, we're going to start with uh, March the 8th, 2011. We start seeing some elevated low frequency harmonics showing up along the 2.5 hertz range. Okay, well, you know, that's that. Uh, in fact, I'm going to look center this just a little bit better so <clears throat> it won't annoy me. Uh, anyway, so, okay, this was uh, on March the 8th. Let's go to the 11th, or uh, March the 9th, strong, strong 2.5 hertz signal or abruption in the ionosphere according to the magnetometer. Uh, it gets stronger as we go in the UT day from uh, about 18, from about lunchtime uh, through midnight on the 9th. Now, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and just click next day, and I'm going to check on what happened on this day. Okay, this was the 10th. Same stuff. Looked like it calmed down a bit. We had some uh, low-level things going on. But the uh, continuous wave along two and a half stayed. So uh, let's go to the day of the earthquake. Okay. Here we are. The morning, or the it'd be the late evening of, for us, 
uh, in the Americas in the um, Central Daylight Saving or Central Daylight Central Time at that time would have been uh, 6 p.m. Uh, for and that would have been Central Standard Central Standard Time. Uh, anyway, strong two and a half hertz measurement 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 and it quits at 10 interesting it just stops remember how strong it's been for the last couple of frames go back and look if you want it's been strong it's been strong we also have a lot of low level ELF ULF background noise again this was the information coming to you before the earthquake in Japan on March 11th, 2011. And here is today's magnetometer readings for the uh, 21st of March, beginning of the 21st, the end of the day 20th going into the 21st of March which is uh, the what UT day we are in now those are awfully close to two and a half and they're strong but they stopped yep they stopped this morning uh, my time would have been about a little after seven o'clock 7 a.m. central daylight savings time then we get some uh, PC1 pulsations so here uh, once again is the uh, Oaxaca Mexico uh, earthquake that happened on the 20th uh, at 1802 uh, Universal Time again that would have been uh, 1 p.m. here in Dallas uh, Central Daylight Savings Time uh, just check out some of the data this is just again I'm making this for me <laughs> but I'm sharing it with y'all just in case somebody can get something out of it Let's see here. Do you have anything else? Yes, I do. Got more to show you. Again, my friends looking for space weather. Um, I haven't talked about it in a couple of days just because there has been more or less <clears throat> earth weather dealing with my area. And then i that's when I start cross-posting to Facebook because of my friends and family in my area. But I do want to let you know that you can always keep up with everything that's going on with earth and space weather the connection between the two and also if it's messing with uh, ham radio because uh, Kevin a friend of mine in uh, Canada runs this page and does a, a wonderful job and as you can see this is the March 21 uh, this is probably the most recent update we've got just regular look at the Sun that we're used to the magnetic look at the Sun you've got uh, the beta particles or the BZ particles for uh, the wind the solar wind speed you've got the Aurora oval showing here K index x-rays uh, protons and then a couple of uh, wrap-ups again showing what's going on it's kind of like up here and up here a lot of information here uh, he takes a lot of time to do this people it's a uh, it's really cool um, if you don't know solar ham say solar cycle 24 and I bet you'll figure it out again uh, lots of good data lots of good data far side flare it occurred today um, and again, this comes from that uh, mess of a sunspot 1429 that just kept blowing at us last time. Well, it's still doing stuff on the backside. So go over to Solar Ham. Check out uh, the video. Uh, it's uh, pretty cool. Our magnetosphere uh, shows a little bit of oscillation here. So we'll just have to see. It just seems a little bit abrupt in its change and across here but it also now when I look at it looks more like it's beginning to settle out back to normal um, he tells you about new sunspots he shows you uh, the stony Hurst well see it, it and it automatically updates by itself that's great I love that uh, he shows you the sterny host sterny stony Hurst view be backside 
visible side, front side. So this would be uh, stereo A ahead, stereo, and stereo B behind, and really this would be SDO. So anyway, shows you some prominences. Uh, if you're having, uh, if you're a uh, ham radio, or I like to watch this for intensity of flares that are happening at at a certain time. If, if we're having a good flare, uh, looking at the global D region absorption, I mean absorption, uh, polar cup absorption is uh, pretty wild sometimes. And then he always has interesting articles, and he puts videos together, and he winds it up usually with the uh, the official. Uh, NOAA solar report uh, put together from uh, our local sources here in the United States anyway so again I know I'm not giving you a lot of solar and sun space weather right now but this is where you can find it for everybody else let's look over here real quick oh gotta move you can't move you stop haha ha, I moved you again chances are Chances are this is going to like break apart. Uh, if it does stay stuck in the middle, uh, our weather here in North Texas and Oklahoma and the central sections of the or the southern plain, should I say, will be a little on the uh, unsettled side, especially if this strong jet gets together and goes over top. But that's why New England's having such a hot time. Cherry blossoms are out. Well, cherry blossom festival is happening now, and they came out several weeks ago. Uh, here in my own garden, I have a gardenia bush that generally only blooms in February, and I've got some pictures in places, if you don't believe it, to show you ice hanging off of the flowers and the plant because we've had... Uh, sub freezing and running water at the same time on them and uh it's just it's really odd for me to see the the gardenias go take so late in the year to bloom so it's interesting a lot of interesting weather phenomenon going on but that's that again i need to remember i'm making this for me so i guess that's all i have to do i'm up to 17 minutes and i'll upload this but man if <laughs> If it's bored you, I'm sorry. If it's enlightened you, let me know. Let me know if there's something you have questions about. I'll be happy to tell you because, uh, as you can tell, I like this stuff. Okay, this is R from L47 coming from Dallas, Texas. Robert Vermillion. Hey, y'all have a good one.